So sadly we've reached another international break, so as we prepare for a boring fortnight of international football, let's reflect on this week's Premier League action and look at who are the heroes and who are the villains. Our first villain of the week is Deli Ali. Tottenham were in sublime form at the weekend against Huddersfield, but the only downside of a great performance from Maurizio Pochettino's side was the moment of madness from Deli Ali, with the youngster throwing himself to the floor in an attempt to win a penalty for his side, with the score already at 3-0. Neil Swarbrick wasn't taking any of the bait from Ali though, correctly booting him for a dive. What on earth went through the lad's head? He was in on goal, could have probably scored, but instead played for a penalty, looking to round the keeper from a ridiculous angle and then flopping to the deck. In a week in which he was banned by FIFA, you'd think Ali would try and deflect any bad press away from himself, but clearly he just couldn't help himself. Our next villain is Jonas Lossel. God bless the Danish keeper, he's had a great start of life in the Premier League with Huddersfield, but he had a bit of a shocker at the John Smith Stadium this weekend. His wayward kick allowed Kieran Trippett to play in Harry Kane for the opener, in which he was beaten at the front post. A bit of a taboo for a goalkeeper, and from there on in, his confidence was rocked, in what can only be described as a bad day at the office for the keeper. We all have them, Jonas, but the masses who have you in the fantasy team probably won't be as forgiving. Over to the heroes and we've got Marouan Fellaini. The big bushy haired Belgian isn't everyone's cup of tea, and his Manchester United career was more well known for flying elbows rather than fleeting performances early on, but Fellaini has a home with Jose Mourinho at the helm, and the lanky midfielder is certainly repaying his manager's faith in him, scoring twice in their 4 0 thrashing of Crystal Palace as he continues to deputise for the injured Paul Pogba. The special one must be ecstatic with Fellaini's form, although it won't start him whinging about something. This week it was fixture congestion, what's it going to be next time? The weather? Back to the villains and we've got Crystal Palace. Well Roy, you've only got one game to save your job. Frank de Boer got four, so surely you'll only get four games as well. It was a third defeat on the bounce for Roy Hodgson as Crystal Palace manager, taking another hammering in Manchester as Mourinho's men put four past them. While no one was expecting the Eagles to go to Old Trafford and get something to kickstart their season, there's a right and wrong way to lose a game, and Palace certainly fell into the latter category on Saturday. It's zero points from seven games, with zero goals scored and 17 conceded, leaving Palace rock bottom going into the international break. The defending was desperate at Old Trafford, with a lack of effort at times which was embarrassing. It's Chelsea up next for Crystal Palace. Oh dear. For the first time, Roy Hodgson won't want an international break to end. Our next hero is Diafra Sacco. The forward had a point to prove when he was brought on by Slavin Bilic, with the Hammers manager getting battered with boos for bringing off their marquee player and biggest goal threat in Javier Hernandez. The Mexican showed his disapproval on the bench, but Bilic had played his hand, going all in on Diafra Sacco. Having been on the brink of leaving West Ham, including having a medical elsewhere and heading to the horse racing on deadline day, Sacco was the Olympic Stadium hero come full time, scoring the winner on what had been a frustrating afternoon for the West Ham faithful. I think it's fair to say that Slavin Bilic owes that man a drink. Back to the villains we've got Saido Berahino. It's at the point where we actually feel sorry for the Stoke striker, the poor lad can't buy a goal for love nor money. To think where his career was a few years ago at West Brom, hammering goals in with a bright future ahead of him, now he's looking to get a game at Stoke and he can't get on the score sheet, which is quite a pressing issue for any striker. Fair play to him for wanting to take the penalty, he could have easily have shirked the responsibility and passed it on to someone else, but that miss will have crippled his confidence even more. He's turning into a bit of a Rufus Smalls in front of goal, but that'll mean nothing if you haven't seen Mike Bassett, England manager. Our next hero is Richarlison. I couldn't have told you a single thing about Richarlison before he joined Watford this summer, other than that he's probably Brazilian and that his name has definitely been used for a regen on Football Manager in years gone by. But seven games into his Premier League career, everyone knows who Richarlison is now, scoring three goals so far for the Hornets, who continued their impressive start by coming from two goals down to draw with West Brom on Saturday. It took a 95th minute equaliser though, with Richarlison powering home a late header to rescue a point. It's the second week in a row in which a late Richarlison goal has won Watford some points, having scored a 90th minute winner at Swansea last time out. The 20 year old clearly has the appetite and ability for the Premier League, much to the delight of Colin Farrell, sorry Marco Silva. Our next heroes are Manchester City. Huge statement from Pep Guardiola's side on Saturday night, to go to the home of the champions and do a job on them has really put them at the front of the Premier League park, because it's these kind of results that will matter come the end of the season. City have put the pressure on United now, who have the same number of points as them after 7 games, but are yet to play any of the big hitters, so Mourinho's men will need to make a statement themselves when they get the chance, which is handy because the next game is against Liverpool. 
But back to Man City and what a goal it was to win the game. A stunning strike from Kevin De Bruyne after a brilliant piece of build-up play. Sergio Aguero may be nursing his injured ribs, but it's not going to be doom and gloom at the Etihad while he's out of action. Over to Sunday and our final villains of the week are Everton. On paper they had a great summer transfer window, with big signings coming through the door, but on the face of it it's been an awful start of the season, made even worse by suffering a defeat at home to Burnley on Sunday. In fairness to the Toffees, they have played a lot of the top clubs in the Premier League so far, but with all due respect to Burnley, Sean Dyche's side aren't one of them, and Everton fans are fair to expect their side to win that kind of game. Ronald Koeman's side are going through quite the rough patch and he'll need to turn it round soon otherwise the pressure will seriously be on the Dutchman, who is already facing questions from some supporters at Goodison Park. And finally, our last heroes of the week are Burnley. Another huge result on the road for Sean Dyche's men, who have now picked up 8 points away from home already this season, which is more than they managed throughout the entirety of last season. And Burnley are doing their best to shake off that long ball team tag they've got, because Jeff Hendricks winning goal is the kind of strike that you've seen a million times at the new camp, passing the ball around exquisitely as if it was Xavi and Iniesta in the middle of the park. Constantly proving the doubt is wrong, if Burnley sort out their home form, they could launch a bid for the title. So those are this week's Premier League heroes and villains, let us know yours in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.